Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Zena. Hi, Zena. My name's Karen. I'm calling from England, Norwich. Okay, nice to meet you. I'm I'm right now in Switzerland myself. Okay. So <laughs> nice and night. chilly. I've got I've uh, got the big jumpers on too. I know. We had snow today again. So uh, I was surprised. It was a surprise. We had rain at our house and then just up snow where we go walking every day. And so yeah. we are back in our warm woolies and I'm sitting right next to a heater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, me too. We got the fire going. <laughs> oh, that's great. So Genevieve's joined. Welcome, Genevieve. Um, I usually either prepare a case study or a theme to talk about, unless, um, Karen, you have something, or Genevieve, you have something specific I can talk about. I can bring up some points. No, nothing really specific. Didn't, okay. didn't know what to expect. <laughs> Yeah, so usually either reviewing a case study of a difficult or complicated or simple questions um, or talking about a specific theme. And I was pretty excited about my theme this week, so I'll share that with you guys. And yeah, <laughs> so the theme that I started this week, every week, um, kind of just to tell you, I come up with a theme for my group, for two of my group, group classes I teach. Uh, these two classes, Tuesday and Thursday, I kind of call them sister classes and I call them connecting through Pilates. And so each week I have a new theme for that, those two classes. And I try and teach a concept or an idea to the group while they're moving through the class, just to give them, to keep, to keep it interesting, to keep it fun. It's something that's really helped me with the Zoom classes and for myself to really not have the same class every week. Otherwise it gets, I get, I get in the same class routine and, and um, I think I get bored. I don't know the students. <laughs> I think I get bored. Uh, so this, this week was proprioception or is proprioception. And um, I was, a lot of people, just re regular people don't even know what proprioception means. But the idea that, and, and I was trying to differentiate it a little bit between balance and proprioception. So proprioception being that joints sense of position in space, right? So I, I did a lot of work in standing um, this week. We did a lot of balance work, but, but light, I would call it light balance work. Like uh, I have them get on the foam roller and take their both legs to tabletop while they're laying on it, hands, fingertips on the floor and try and just hold that position with as little hand on the floor as possible. So really from the center, finding that balance and sense of space. And then from there today, it's class, I progressed it to uh, one foot down, hands up, the uh, one foot, just the tippy toe down, trying mm -hmm. to switch legs, um, extending legs, you know, just variations on there. And then the, the fun thing that I did that was new was I used the squishy ball a lot as a balance uh, balancing tool. So um, maybe I'll show you if if you want a few of the things I was working on with them, because I would have a harder time explaining, I think, than just showing. <laughs> <laughs> so feel free to interrupt, add your thoughts. But um, so I took the squishy ball, um, some of the mo more fun things I ended up doing on all fours and uh, I had them start with working hands on the ball so this something we don't think about as much as shoulder proprioception but it's uh, really important I think for the shoulders to know where they are yes uh, <laughs> so I had them just start with hands on um, any position that they wanted because I was a little concerned about wrists but um, this is where I ended up with my hands a little bit sideways and then I had them extend uh, one leg out, see if they can hold position, keep holding strong, one leg up, just while they're balancing, trying to keep the body still and let the arms, wrists, hands, shoulders do the work of correction, right? And then have them do that on both sides. So holding, if I look at you, I'll fall over. <laughs> and <Yep>. then... <laughs> And then I had them do just one hand on the floor, one hand on the ball, uh, 
with pressure on the ball, creating circles so that we're again working on that and, and reversing that circle. So working on again, position, space, stability with slight movement. And then I have them go with the one hand on, with the actually same side leg out. We did both, but this was the easier. Same side leg out, pressing in, lifting from here, and then taking the arm out if possible. Swimming. Holding, yep, and then mm. balancing here, right? So there it is. And relaxing everything else, but really the focus on that stability. So um, that was really challenging. Ah. And, they, and then I took them to it under being underneath one of the knees. Yeah, so this, the foot up if possible, uh, organizing the body so that we're long neck, shoulders pressing. And then again, trying that leg out holding position. And then I had them try and do the Ooh, lift wow. as well here. That looks yeah, fun. so it's fun. Uh, kind of, it got really fun to just play with them with those different ideas. Um, and then, so that was kind of the squishy ball thing the, um, that I did on hands and knees that was totally new. The other thing that I used a bit was bringing, um, I didn't under do this, this, this day. Yeah, under the pelvis yeah. with the ball. And then, you know, finding the yep, stability. We do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just really trying to keep that wide across the floor and not, you know, anchoring the arms to do the work, but mm. to do the work center. Yeah. Um, and then the other fun one we did was take the ball up or tabletop and then letting the arms go out, but not press and working here and here. So just finding center Look. stability, you circling, and we did side to side, just working for that control. And that was more to just give them a center or a place to work from. Um, and then the balancing on the ball was more so that proprioception idea. And then I had them in standing do a lot of work, a lot of squat, we actually used their band around the thighs and did squatting and toe tapping in all directions so that they're having to work on their stability leg really and understand what that's doing. Um, we did toe tapping straight down, toe tapping yeah. turned out all of the therabands um, and then legs coming in and out. So to get that lower part doing work. Yeah. And then at the end of that, I had them stand up and put one foot on the ball I'm gonna lose my head, but that's okay. But just, oops, just with the foot on and shifting some weight forward onto the ball and trying to hold everything steady. And then I had them, the ones that could really do it well, I had them working, let's see if I can do it well for you now. So some pressure on finding that stability and then lifting up and down. No, I'm not doing it very well. With the heel, yeah. Yeah. Lifting yeah. and lowering, <laughs> yeah. So it really takes that whole balancing a whole nother place, mm -hmm. you know, takes it to that whole place where it's too much work for them to think and hold. It's really starting to get to be that place where they need to have the joints doing the work to keep up with the pace of the exercise they're doing. So more similar to, I was trying to think of a way to be more similar to if they took a step on an uneven surface, unaware, how would yeah. they recover or how would the joint recover or what was going to happen? Or if they happened to be, you know, on all fours or if they were reaching for something or pushing against something, how would the body react to that? Um, or if they have to grab something quickly, you know, things like that where they are not having the time to think about, oh, I need my shoulders down. Like I'm sitting at my computer and I have to put my yeah. shoulders down. I might have to, right, that's good alignment. But how do I get my body to do that faster so that I can do it regardless of um, what's happening in my world or what, what I, position I end up in without even being aware? So 
so that was sort of the idea. It was, it's been a lot of fun this week. So um, that was what we did. I like it. I like the hands um, on the ball. I hadn't thought about that one. Knees I've done, I've done, and the hips and stuff, but I hadn't thought about the upper body. Mm. Um, and, and, and very keen because in the hospital, we see a lot of fractures, what they call the old ladies fractures in the humerus because we're not on all fours scrubbing the floor doing that movement anymore. Um, so we, we make jokes, you know, and I'm going to try that with the ball underneath, like we're scrubbing the floor, <laughs> taking <laughs> yes. the weight, um, getting, you know, yes, getting through through that upper body and getting the, um, the proprioception in the upper body. So um, thank you. That's some nice, nice food for thought there. <laughs> yes, great. Well, I'm glad to share. Um, Genevieve, did you have any thoughts? Yeah. Mute myself here. Um, <laughs> no, I, I like the the ball work for sure. I um I saw your the theme for this week and in, in a couple of my classes, I did um, a little of that balancing on the roller thing, you know, trying with different hands up and feet up and whatnot. But I hadn't thought about the ball, so. Um, but that's where my mind went as well was just sort of balance. Um, mm -hmm. so kind of fun, fun to work on and, and people don't always realize how, un, how off balance they are <laughs> until you make mm -hmm. a move. Yeah. 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 I agree. I think that, and, um, if, while we're talking about what people don't realize, it always brings me back to, uh, how, People don't realize how difficult it gets for them to get on and off the floor if they haven't done it in a while. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's how much of a predictor that is of longevity, really getting up yeah. and down from the floor. So I think, um, you know, I think balance falls into that category, knowing mm -hmm. if you've got all this balance and stability and proprioception, chances are you're gonna be much less likely to fall. Um, gotcha, which so. as people, it is really key. And then the other piece of that would be if, if I was to continue, probably a good next step would be getting up and down from the floor again. So luck, luckily for us, the people who are on the Zoom, I don't see that many people who are on the Zoom, they're getting up and down from the floor already. Yeah. Uh, I miss, we're missing out on the people who can't do that, who we used to see a lot of, um, uh, and now because we're not in clinic as much now. So hopefully we'll get some of those back. But that was always something that I would work on with my more frail or older population is making yeah. sure they knew how to get up and down off the floor. Um, so that those and squats, deep squats are, mm. I, I tease my ladies who mm. like to hike, um, my 70, my 70 gang, 70s and up, about needing to squat because they need it if they're going to hike in the woods for many hours at a time because who wants to get stuck behind the tree and not be able to stand up again you know like you have to be able to squat if you're going to hike in the woods for hours <laughs> yep. so so we used to joke about the squat in the woods right you've got to do the squat in the woods how are you going to get up from that so that was kind of our joke and theme about uh, getting up from that <laughs> as well so and not cheat with a shiwi either no you gotta you gotta <laughs> do it <laughs> you gotta do your squat. so that was that um theme i'm trying to think if there was another um great theme that i had the week before i was working on lengthening uh, again, I keep coming back to the lengthening, lengthening. ID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also in rehab, I feel like lengthening is such a key to yeah. not squashing, um, not rolling into a problem, uh, literally mm -hmm. rolling into a compression problem yeah. um, is really finding that length through the body and the extension through the body. So growing taller is what I called it. Uh, that whole idea of using lats and um lower trapezius to lift the body into the, the spine, into its posture while breathing and relaxing the shoulder blades downward. So that I also like to talk about that zipper up the front that lets the back relax down. 
um, to secure that position. So I find uh, one of my favorites for growing taller genitives knows this already is the lap pulls. Uh, when you have apparatus, but being able to do a, a lap pull down, lift up and grow through that, it's been a lot harder to find that same feeling without having uh, something to pull mm. down from above. So mm. um, I've been using the roller a lot more for that length out the back of the skull. I've had them hook their hands at the back of their skull, relax the shoulders and lift themselves up. I've used cueing like try and lift off your seat and grow tall through your body while we've been doing some sitting work. Um, those cues, but I don't know if you have any other. Jenny, have you come up with anything else for growing taller? With the, I've tried with TheraBand and things, but on your own body, it's a little harder to find that yeah. grow taller. I um, I've played around a little bit with the TheraBand um, and sort of doing a diagonal crossbody. Um, so what I did was I, um, I think I have a TheraBand I can show it, but um you know, a longer TheraBand where I just stood on the middle of it with one foot and I wrapped it around and kind of tied it on the uh, opposite shoulder. So mm -hmm. just a band going kind of diagonally cross body um, and just kind of standing with that and sort of feeling the um, working against that resistance a little bit, but in a way that's not effort, like a bunch of effort to try and do it similar to standing on the band with holding onto it with both hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That idea. Um, but kind of getting the, the arms out of it a little bit and letting it be a little more from the center. Um, mm -hmm. So I played with that and a little bit of balance with that um, shifting one foot to the other and kind of moving the foot that has the, the band on it as well. Um, yeah. I found that kind of interesting on my own body. I don't know if it translated very well, but yeah. Yeah, I could see how that could work. I mean, those diagonals are always a good thing. I, I can, and I can get, maybe giving them that, that downward cue helps them lift upward. That would be, I've been able, I mean, my favorite one is again, the, I'll show you the ball high in the inner thighs. Let me just give more space so you can see a little bit more. So the ball really high up in the inner thigh um, and then the squeeze in wrap lift feeling that you can get with that pressure. That helps me grow tall, but it sometimes doesn't translate, I find all the way up. Whereas if we had something to pull down and lift up, then I feel like I really get that length in their body that way. So, that's been the challenge to recreate all of it at once. Mm -hmm. Like we can, if we're pulling something downward and I've done the one that makes me sometimes feel the closest to that. This is such a long band. I'm going to fold it in half, but I have sometimes done this one where they're stepping on it with the foot oops, behind and then rolling the shoulders back and down and then lifting the shoulders and lifting the front body. So I'm getting this lift as I'm being held down in the back almost. So that helps me find the growth through the crown of the head a little bit, but <clears throat> it's still pressure from down up instead of up down, which um, doesn't quite translate if I go this way because it's pressure on myself rather than being from above. But, yeah, that, that, that above, uh -huh. but I, you can do, I can get this. This actually does get some of that length if they understand the concept of the head going that way. Yeah. But sometimes this is what happens instead. And then we lose the shoulder. So the pressure has to be in the two direction, which is a little hard to cue at times, I think. So, um, yeah, anyway, it'll be, if I come up with it, I'll share it. <laughs> if I come up with just the right one with a TheraBand without any equipment, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I, I've done a, um, some workshops with the fascia release um, and same with the physios when we've, we've gone down to um, London and done the big 
um, symposiums with the physios and working with the fascia release. And I think the one that really got everybody um, understanding how to walk tall and lengthen, and then you have a longer stride coming, is the ladies who wear have the pots on their heads in Africa. Mm. Um, and their stride because they're standing tall to the guys carrying the backpack when you lean forward your gait and your step shortens and you can emulate that in class so you know I got everybody walking hunched over carrying the weight on the backpacks and seeing the stride and then I got them tall with the blocks on their head and how long the length they could be to really as you said create that length in the body um, uh, and walking around and that's something queuing in like as soon as the posture goes forward you shorten everything the stance goes everything goes your mobility the um and the the stride goes so yes trying to emulate that being very very tall I think a lot of my classes they do an awful lot of ballet because that's my background <laughs> yeah <laughs> so a lot of lifting up the hip suck we talk a lot about pulling up through the heels to get the weight out of the hips and then we can release the waist and then lift from the waist um which is and then you're queuing from the breastbone it's, it's a dancer's way and i suppose a lot of that comes through my teaching because that's my background is ballet um mm -hmm. so all yeah <laughs> trying to get them to understand isn't it <laughs> It's all about trying Thank to get you. them to understand in, in all different ways. Yeah. And I think ballet actually, yes, you're right. All the ballet cues, well, Genevieve, you have all those too, but the mm. lifting up from the inside, um, it comes so naturally though. I think at some point that it then becomes hard, <laughs> hard to present to or yes. make somebody else feel it also. Right. Uh, to, it's that translation bit from what your body knows to getting somebody else's body into that but, same yeah. place but I think yeah. you're right ballet bar is exactly I mean that's pretty much what I was having them do in all different positions standing up with the legs moving too on the floor is the similar mm. idea of even in the proprioception how do you keep tall on that one leg so you stay stable while the other one does whatever it does um, obviously it's not beautiful ballet but it doesn't matter. <laughs> at least it's just moving. But at least it's, it's moving. Still trying to and, we, <laughs> and we spend a lot of time on one leg. Every time we move, every time we step, we're on one leg. And, and yes. you know, yes, and trying to get that through to class. Uh, how important is, is everything is not on two legs static. You know, you're fluid and that fluid move, move, movement. Um, so, yes, doing a lot more of building up in exercises so um i suppose the other girl i teach with is also a royal ballet girl so we've kind of developed our class like a royal like a class that we we start um you know deep and then we build up and build up to the end which is then probably something like a one arm plank hit for those who really can or do something that then they've got everything connected in because you you couldn't do a jump before you've done a plie so we've worked the class that way um where am I going with my thread of thought now I can't, had a 10 hour day and I can't think straight <laughs> about, about length <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, so yes so yeah gain, gaining that length um but gaining that stability and that balance on one leg isn't it as you were saying gaining that transference mm -hmm. of weight whilst mm -hmm. tall and then you're less likely to fall mm -hmm. exactly yes yeah, so that was this one today too. This is again, one of my go-tos for that is this holding, oops, holding here. Lifting right. the leg I had up. Them, yep, and then the arm with it sometimes yeah. really helps get this hip in line and have yeah. them really work on these motions. And then from yeah. there, okay. they're reaching back. Right, so that. I'm curious if you, um, took that ends of your band uh, and kind of, as I described before, that sort of cross body and just kind of tie it up at your shoulder or pin it at your shoulder. So um, going this way. But step through it. Oh, step through. So, this way? But I have uh, to step on it. So stand on with your right foot. Mm -hmm. and, it, and then the band goes along the back side and then along the front side. Ah. Yeah. 
and ties there. There we go. You can just kind of pin it in place. And then you stand on the left and then you can sort of use that step down or right. even do or something like that with the right. Yes. So then I can work on this. And then if yeah, there's like yeah. a and it does even... give, yeah, it does give a little bit of that uh, resistance so I can resist into this shoulder and this right. side right. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just find sometimes people, when they're holding the band, they wind up, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Way to get around yeah. that. This, yeah, this is good. This is nice. I like this. It's a nice expression of the slings as well. Always trying to say mm -hmm. to the you know, spatula, yeah. mm -hmm. you've got you, you've got your slings and your anterior and your posterior snake and all of the lateral slings which are all crossing the body and getting them to understand mm -hmm. that from that side is going to affect that side, isn't it? The mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, I wonder even if I took this. Oh, I'm going to lose it all. Oh, this you cross way. it. Uh, cross it. Yeah. I think it might even be better. There we go. Now I really, I'm just going to hold it for the moment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I bet today I've really fought with the bands. I don't know what my problem was today, but I fought with my bands earlier today too. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so here now I really feel like there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, now it feels just a little more stuck on this side. So I feel the diagonal a little bit more. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, and I really have to say, I can't go anywhere in my pelvis, which is kind of nice not to be able to go anywhere wrong. Oh, good one. Nice, okay. nice sling, sling one. <laughs> yeah. Go have long yeah. band. Good. Yeah, good. Thank you, long band. I just found this. I'm having a hard time buying TheraBand in Switzerland. And I've run through my, my good ones. And so I found this one thinking it was a whole roll of TheraBand. In fact, it was just one long piece. It's so very I thought, well, really it'll, be, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be useful for some, for these long things, yes. Um, yeah, that's great, Genevieve. I do like that a lot. So. Do you use, I use the band for, for practicing a roll down and roll up. So they're standing on it and coming up same sort behind you so they can feel the spine <laughs> and then they're rolling down and then rolling back up so they can really then feel the articulation yeah. and then coming back up against something, a bit like the wall, but you've got it all the way going down. But you've got oh, a really tall, nice too. tall band. So you're standing on it and it comes up behind your head up and then yeah. you, you go down with it and come back so it's quite nice i do that one as well that's it yeah that's it and then you got a really cue from the top of the head going down and then especially into that middle lower back or that which mm -hmm. is often tight people don't feel that when they're rolling down yep. so i find that's a really nice proprioception talking about proprioception yes hey look at that lovely spine <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> hypermobile spines bend really well, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you hypermobile as well? I am. I'm not on the spec like the EDS spectrum, yeah. but no, I'm definitely but have... th thankfully, but I definitely have yeah. more yeah. range than than is necessary. Hence <laughs> the circus. Hence <laughs> <laughs> the circus was very easy yeah. for me to jump right in there. Yeah. Yes. Definitely have that. I'm sure you do being a dancer. Well, you said you did anyway for your Yeah. Stiffened joint. up a bit with age. I could do splits in all directions, but not anymore. <laughs> yeah. I, I sometimes think that's maybe a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just interesting just watching. Um, so we've been doing um, at the end of the class, we lots of hip work and hip opening because people have been sitting and sitting and sitting and at the end of class sitting cross-legged and then who can get elbows on the floor, which is one of my things. I go, ah, uh -huh, you're hypermobile. You know, all the ones who can get elbows straight on the floor with no issues. I know, right. Yeah. <laughs> and all the rest of them are like half, you know, oh, I can't move. 
Um, <laughs> and it's just been interesting in lockdown how swift we've all got. Because normally I go, yeah. And this I went, oh, my God, I can't get my elbows on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Stiffened up in lockdown, really. Yeah. And, um, so I think if that's happened to me, what's happened to everybody else? <laughs> I I've know, got, right. I have ability. <laughs> um, so, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say um, on April 29th, I think we're going to have uh, Dr. Gloria Tucker come in and do a little question answer session on PRP and prolotherapy. So, that was something that we talked about briefly last week. And so I reached out to her to come in and um, I thought, you know, I could study up a little bit more on it and explain it in, the, in the, my understanding, but I wanted to have somebody who's really, that's what they're doing, come and talk to us. So I, I believe, I have to still confirm the date, but I believe it will be on the 29th of April that she's going to come into this session and just do a good question answer. We'll record it too. So if you can't be there, we'll try and post it as well. Um, and then uh, the other question I got was queuing for the hypermobility, for hypermobile clients. So what kind of cues you use versus what you would use for somebody who's not so hypermobile or isn't, you know, hypermobility, the client that, that was brought up in the case study was, she's just everywhere all over the place, doesn't know, has 10 places where her shoulder could be positioned. You know, how do you cue somebody like that? So um, that request came in today. So I was not prepared to answer all of those questions today. Uh -huh. But I think so next week I will, uh, we, maybe we can talk about queuing and hypermobility, what the differences are, what some good thoughts and ideas might be for that, uh, for the really hypermobile. So, um, okay. so if you guys are interested, it'd be lovely to have you back. So great. Yeah, please reach out. And I would love the more the merrier. I'm really trying. Thanks. We've had a lot of different people come in in the last month, um, which is fantastic from all over the place. With, so some from the US, some from England, some from West Coast, some from East Coast, some one from Dubai we had. Um, so we're just trying to just spread the word so that we have a forum, a place to go, ask questions, answer questions. Um, and then if they have thoughts, ideas, questions, uh, and, or you do, or you want to answer some thoughts and questions too, you know, let me know. And uh, you can send me an email or just reach out through Facebook or whatever. And we'll try and address all the questions and topics. And if I don't know, um, maybe somebody else would, and, or maybe we bring in an expert, like I'm trying to do for the PRP and the prolotherapy. So oh. Yeah, oh, that's lovely. That's that's really nice because I think in lockdown we have got all a little bit cut off and and um, zoomed out teaching wise, um, and not you know we're not doing our courses. I'm not yeah looking at other things, and it has just become a little bit like oh what can I do now? And yes, it's yeah. nice to get refreshed and and um, excited excited again. <laughs> Yes, something new, a little new something. Just yeah, a just something little new. Something like, ooh, why did I think of that? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or just taking what you thought of one step further or one step to the right yeah. or one step, you know, just a little, just a little tweak. They keep me excited. So um, <laughs> they keep yeah. things interesting for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. brilliant. And I forgot, so Genevieve, I've forgotten your name. Zaina. Zaina. Yes. I said a... Z E I N A. Z E I N A. Z E I N A. Zena. Lovely. And I'm yes. car in. Yeah. Like car a car in, yes. in the garage. Car in, not car out. Car in. <laughs> T A R I N. Well, it's different. And you, you said it's nuts for Pilates. Nuts about that, Pilates. Nuts about Pilates. Great. Because oh, I'm car in nuts. So we've, we've played on it. Nuts about Pilates. That's very I cute. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so just yeah, an easy really way that. to remember and my husband has yeah. nuts about music so so we all have uh, our different our right. different things <laughs> yeah oh that's so great <laughs> yeah, my name didn't my name didn't help me out there <laughs> <laughs> it didn't help me out there no complicated surname <laughs> yes i do have a complicated surname <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 
And so, where are you, Genevieve? Where are you ringing in from? Uh, so I'm in the Synergy studio in San Rafael in California. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. <laughs> miles away. <laughs> miles and miles. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I, I have one of those last names that I probably should do more stuff with. It's Hand. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. So I could be Handy, handy Pilates. Too. I don't know. <laughs> Andy Pilates. Yeah, I like that. Or hands-on Pilates. Hands-on yeah. Pilates. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh gosh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, um, and are you happy to open? Because my sister in Florida is a yoga teacher, and mm-hmm. I brought in the Pilates to her. Oh. And she's loved it. She's really brought in the call. She like she said, why have I never cued glutes? I just thought everybody's glutes would activate. And I didn't realize they're not. And I'm, you know, it was one of those things that she's like, oh my God, flash moment. Thank you, Pilates. And I've done a lot of work with her. And we want to later on do some work together. Yeah. Um, but she's in Florida. So I never see her. So apart from oh. on Zoom. Um, and so she's more on your time zone than I am. So she might be interested if you're happy. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. It would be great. Very technical. It, it actually, um, Jonathan Erla came on a couple weeks ago, too. He's the yoga Lotties, uh, yes. guy who started the yoga Lotties. He was on um, two weeks ago with us, which is really nice. He said he was going to come back around, too, because he had a lot more input to give and had to run off to a client. But um, it would be great to have that perspective, too. I mean, there's so much uh, what I've realized in what we're doing so much more mat work now that there's so much from Pilates and yoga that are really similar. I mean, even if you think about downward dog and elephant, it's the same position. But I just, you know, now that I'm putting elephant, elephant, we normally do on the reformer. We don't normally do it on the mat but since we've put everything on the mat I'm like well this is still this is elephant but it's downward dog and it's elephant you know so it's mm. been really great to see sort of how as far away as the two practices were developed that there's so many of the same themes the lengthening the yeah. shapes the um, idea of stability the you know the center being the, the center of the movement is is yeah. there in both practices so it would be lovely to have her if she's interested in yeah. coming and sharing yeah absolutely okay so. oh, lovely 